The Small Business Show, episode 385 for Wednesday, June 22nd, 2022. Greetings, folks, and welcome to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we are small business-ing every single week. Our sponsor for this episode includes Rate Tracker at uh, sky-sale.com slash rate tracker, your credit card processing rate watchdog. We'll talk more about that. And uh, and we've also got a, another podcast to tell you about in this episode, which we'll talk about both of those things a little bit later. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And coming to you from South Lake Tahoe this week, I'm Shannon Jean. How are you, Dave? I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing good. We uh, we had our oven installed this morning, for those of you following nice. that, that saga. That's the one yeah. that expired, right? Yeah, the one that expired. Yes, we, we bought a, a new one that has a, a renewed le- or a new lease on life. That's right. Yeah. And I'm setting a 10-year clock on this thing, man. <laughs> Yeah, that's smart. That's yep. smart. I'm gonna yep. get those stickers expires on. Oh, yeah, that's it's an interesting concept. I, 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 and and once I, you know, I, I mean what I say. Once we get through with, we've got, we just built a patio, and so it's like getting the fire pit and the hot tub and all this stuff hooked up. Once we get through all of that and all the surprises are over with that, the the financial surprises I call them, uh, then we're going to head down the path of replacing our two refrigerators in the house because. Uh, because those are also on borrowed time, and I I want to replace them on my schedule if I have any say in the matter. So smart, yeah, That's great, yeah, 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 yeah. Very cool, um, very cool. So you go were ahead. Recently on the road, yeah. You were recently traveling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not nothing. I mean, well, I mean, obviously, we were we were uh, over in Greece. My daughter left the early, early this morning for some time in Canada, and I mentioned that I was going to talk about another podcast. I, I, I will, I will do that here as part of a little tip that I wanted to share. And the other podcast that I want to tell you about is one of my shows. It's it's Mac Geek Gab at MacGeekGab.com. It's the show I've been doing for seventeen years. Many listeners to this show probably came to this show from Mac Geek Gab, but I know there's many of you that have not because this show's been in existence for seven years of its own. And what we do over at Mac Geek Hub is we share tech tips and uh, mainly focused on Apple users. We really are like Q&A for Apple users. And if the reference car talk for Apple users makes sense to you, then that is a perfect description of what that show is. Uh, and if it doesn't, kids, ask your parents. They'll tell you what uh, what that's all about. And and we talk about a lot of things. Like, Shannon, did you know that if you press and hold the mute button during a call on your iPhone, it will put that call on hold? Oh, that's a great tip. Right? That's a good t- I did know that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I did know that. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's a good tip. Though. Yep. And if you say, you know, you can, you can like dictate with Siri or whatever, but if you're in the yep. car and trying to dictate a text message to Siri, that can be a, a, a difficult thing because you'll say, hey, comma, Shannon, exclamation point. Thanks so much for messaging me, period. Right? Like that whole thing, it starts yes, to get pedantic. Yes. Now, Apple's fixing that in the next version of the OS, but- if oh. all you want to do is send somebody a voice response, you can say reply with audio. And from there, oh, oh that's awesome. Siri will I let you record that. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Like, it's all kinds of cool things. And I learned most, all the things I just told you, I learned from our listeners and then had the, the pleasure of sharing on the show. Uh, one thing that I learned because of all of our recent travels that I was happy to then also share on the show, and I'm happy to share here is when you're going to another country these days, at least if you're someone like me, having data like on your cell phone, data access is huge. You know, you want to use maps. You want to be able to look things up while you're out and about and not necessarily on Wi-Fi. And the good news is most of our phones these days, Shannon, use uh, allow us to have two connections active at once. And okay. it, right, you put a SIM card in your phone. Like that, we've been doing that for a long time, right? You, you get a new phone, you put the SIM card in, and and it, and you know your number comes over and all that stuff. And all the iPhones and 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 really all the Android phones that are out now still, of course, support a SIM card. Most uh, phones, in fact, any iPhone from the 10R, the 11, the 12, the 13 series, all support dual SIM cards. But the second one is a very special type of SIM card. It's not a physical SIM. It's an electronic SIM. It's an eSIM. 
And the beauty of the eSIM is it used to be when you went, even if you had dual SIM capability in your phone, you know, you'd land in wherever, whatever country you were in. And as soon as you got off the plane, you had to go to like the SIM shop in the airport and buy right. a SIM to, you know, and a plan and, and put that in your phone. And it was, it was a very chaotic process and getting it all activated was such a pain in the neck. Well, with an eSIM, you get to do all that stuff before you go. So you just pick your your and and because you can have two in the phone, you don't need a SIM that has a voice line. All you need is an eSIM that has data access because you can leave your voice and your texting on your regular SIM. And even better than that is you get to shop for that eSIM at home where you can really look at things and you don't have to do it in the mania of the airport after a red eye. And even better than that is a website that I found, Shannon, called eSIMDB.com. So eSIM database, eSIMDB.com. You tell it what country you're going to. This is a free website. I, I, I need to find a way to send them money because I don't know what I would do without them. Uh, I don't want them to go away. You go to eSIMDB, you say, I'm going to, like last night, my daughter and I went online, chose Canada. You get to sort. They show you all of the eSIM providers that serve Canada. Great. Okay. And and then you can sort by the cost per gigabyte, the amount of time that the SIM is good for, the 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 overall price of the SIM. And well, I know my daughter's going to be in Canada for 14 days. So it was like, all right, well, and I just chose to sort by price from lowest to highest, like actual out-of-pocket cost. And, and then I just scrolled down the list and it was like, okay, not enough data, not enough data, not long enough, not long enough. Okay, great. There's one, That's 10 awesome. gigs for 30 days for 18 bucks. And that happens to cover her in also the U.S., but Canada and, you know, wherever else she needed to go. And uh, and that was it. And it was like, okay, great. Good to go. Bought it. It The entire process, including activating it on her phone, like from starting at eSIMDB to being completely finished and we're on to the next thing, five minutes. So. Really? That's awesome. I, it's crazy. Yeah. So these are the kinds. I mean, A, that's a tip that every small business owner probably needs to know about as travel is, you know, kind of rekindling here. But also, these are the kinds of things you'd learn about on Mac Geek Cab if you want to listen. So there you go. Yeah. That's terrific. Thanks for sharing that. There's yeah, man. Some good tips. Yeah, I think so. Reply with audio. Okay, I'm trying that today. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love, we, we try to, we, we don't do it in every episode, but we try to start most shows with a quick tip and, and those, or several quick tips sometimes. And those are, those are them. Those, you know, those are some That's recent great. ones. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Cool. It's yeah. Enough. So it's, uh, you know, there's all kinds of changes happening, and uh, and it's wonderful for all of you out there. There are changes that are happening, and some of you are about to start businesses, and we are here to tell you why you should not start a business. That's going to be our, our topic today. To not right, start. Oh, to not start. Yeah. Should yeah. not start. I, I like that. That's good. It's going to be a contrarian uh, episode. Well, I mean, it might be it. accurate. Like, I mean, yeah, we might, we be, might highlight something that is exactly a reason why you should not start a business. I but, like it. But if you right. don't find yourself there, well, then maybe it is time to start a business. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, before we do that, I do want to tell you about Rate Tracker from sky-sale.com slash Rate Tracker. Payment processing, you know, with our credit cards and everything, Shannon, is nuts. It, th so many of the providers out there are literally out to confuse you so that they can screw you on money and charge you higher processing fees than a you should be paying. And in many cases, higher than you think you're paying. Right. They make it confusing intentionally. So let me ask this question. But it's a loaded question because I have the answer. What if there was a free solution that allowed you to easily and automatically understand your bottom line credit card processing rates and fees every month. Wouldn't that be amazing? Like think back, Shannon, when we dealt with those providers whose names we say a lot in the show, but I probably won't say nightmare. here in the thing. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Well, good news. Rate Tracker, our sponsor, is a free and simple way for you as a small business owner to know your costs to accept payments so you don't get lied to or taken advantage of by your payment processor. Rate Tracker makes it super simple for you to understand your costs to accept payments and provides you with free access to trusted payment experts like SkySale Solutions who can give you free advice on how to optimize your payment acceptance program. It, it, the way Rate Tracker works, it will 
alert you when your net payment processing costs change. And, and it'll simply tell you what they are, too. But it will it, it, it's looking out for you. It's such a cool service. I, it, like, I am so glad this exists. The only thing that upsets me is I didn't know about it a few years ago when I was running into these problems or really for the 10 years prior to that, when I was being screwed and I didn't know it, but you know, yeah. we learn, we live. Every business owner can use this service. Every business owner. So go to, go to sky dash sale.com slash rate tracker to sign up for the only service who is dedicated to helping you know, your numbers, keep track of your payment processing costs and alert you immediately. If there's ever a rate increase again, that's sky dash sale.com slash rate tracker. And our thanks to sky sale and Rate Tracker for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, let's get into this, shall we? Let's do it. Why? Yeah, you know, yeah, go ahead. Yes, well, you should not start a business, right? For, yeah. I mean, the past seven years, we've been encouraging you, right? Every, all our listeners, why you should start, uh, things you need to do. You know, along the way, we've, we've had tons of people on the show that talked about their success and how they powered through adversity and all that stuff. Um, but I think it's a good time to, to, to talk to the people that maybe haven't started the business or, uh, and, and maybe there's very good reasons. And I, I want to talk about those reasons today and, and blow through some of them. And you made a comment earlier, David, I, I found interesting. You, you said that some were, some of these reasons were valid and some were not, or is, was that the term? Yeah. As I started, you know, we, we talked about this earlier in the week. And and as we usually do, we kind of both formulate our thoughts. It, Shannon and I each have very different approaches to formulating our thoughts, which is great. I love it. And as I was formulating mine and, and coming up with reasons, some of them were I put on my valid reasons list, like things that that, uh, yeah. you know, absolutely. If if this is true for you and it is immutable, meaning that it cannot change, then you probably shouldn't start a business. But if you think this is a reason uh, others are on the invalid list. If you think it's a reason you shouldn't start a business, well, it, you, I think you're wrong actually, but you know, we'll get yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I will, I will, um, I will surprise you with these hopefully as we, as Good. we march through this here. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I think the first one we're probably in sync on, we've talked about it a lot over the years. In fact, episode 15, all the way back, you know, about seven years ago, and, and episode 13, we did a Managing Your Fear episode. And then a couple episodes later, we did a show called The Fear Confessional, if you remember that, oh, Dave. Man. <laughs> and, yeah. And we both talked about our own fears and, and how it held us back and how we got through those things. And so the first reason why you, you should not start a business is on my list is you are afraid. And huh. I think that that fear is the, I think it's the number one reason why people fail to act afraid of failure and, and maybe even afraid of success. Oh, definitely. Right? Fear of failure and fear of success are the same thing because they are changes. They are things that yeah, will impact right. your life significantly, perhaps. And, yes. uh, and, and change is fear of change is is a huge thing. Even just starting a business is a change. And so fear of change is there. Yeah. I, I, I also had fear on at the top of my list and it is at the top of my list of invalid reasons why ding, ding. <laughs> you should not start a business because being afraid is normal. It is something yep. we all experience. I, I still experience it regularly with my businesses. In fact, of course, when I notice my fear creeping in, is when we are about to do something different. You know, if I'm sitting here at my desk, let's take Backbeat Media, for example, right? The business that, that we've had for a long time here, 23 years, and it, it's the one that we manage and, you know, sell all the sponsorships for a bunch of podcasts. When I'm sitting at my desk, uh, you know, somebody sends me, sends us a thing, hey, I want to, you know, vet uh, some new sponsor for a new campaign. That's a normal thing for us. Zero fear. Zero fear. When I sit and say, and so we go through the whole process, the money comes in, it's great, right? Coasting along, business as usual. Now, the first time I did that, there was not zero fear. <laughs> it was very much more than that. But now we do that all the time, no fear. Anytime, I, I just talked, we've been talking to new, uh, some other podcasters, they're not necessarily new podcasters. In fact, many of them are not new podcasters, 
but uh, we're bringing more podcasters into the Backbeat family, a few more. And talking with someone for the first time, as I head into that phone call, I start coming up, or if I look at it and it's three hours later on my schedule, immediately, oh, well, I don't have time for that today. Maybe I should push that call off tomorrow. Like, these are the thoughts that enter my head because yeah. it's something new. But these people don't know me. They may not like what we tell them about how Backbeat works, and they might not want to work with us. And that's, I, I like, th there are, if we talk to 10 podcasters, that might be true of seven of them because we work in a very specific way that works for us. And that's okay. Like, we're totally fine with that. It's those three that we really want because it's a good fit. But I'm always afraid of what those seven are going to say because I know what yeah. they're going to say. But it, it and, and I, it, I've learned to notice that fear or the things that are the symptoms of that fear and ignore them. Now, there are some things yeah. where you want to acknowledge the fear and maybe maybe listen to it. But there's a lot of times well, you, where you don't want to listen. Yeah, you actually came up with uh, this topic, I think, came from you. We did episode 370 on uh, using fear as a compass. Mm. And uh, we did that show not not too long ago. We'll put these these links in the show notes. So if you miss those episodes, you can go back and listen to these. Uh, and, I, and I think it's I, I feel similar. I, I would call it like the you know you, my nerves kind of get going or whatever yeah and it's not that i mean i guess it, you, you could consider it fear at a different different level but um i really enjoyed that fear is a compass concept because I, in my experience if i look back on the things that made me nervous or fearful of trying something different and they're changing th some things up some of those may uh, i would argue most of those things had a very positive impact on my business and even on my personal life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Looking back at them. So. That's right. Yeah. Change yeah. changes for me anyway, always fearful. It's yep. full of, I am full of fear when I am, am going into change and that's never going to change. No pun intended. Right. But it, it is, it is something that I've learned and now I notice it and it's like, okay, what's the reason for that fear? Is it, is it a a reason a valid reason to not proceed? And those are two different questions. The fear is valid because it's I mean it's a feeling, right? <laughs> it's if it's if it's a real yeah, feeling, sure. it's a valid feeling. But is it a valid reason to stop moving forward? And that's the question you need to ask yourself. Because sometimes f the fear is telling you do not do this, right? And 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 it is right. correct once you look at it logically. But you have to be able to notice, detach, and evaluate. I like it. It's good. Yeah, man. Yep. That's good. It's it's a that's a huge huge thing to get to get through. But once you learn how to master it, you can be really powerful. Yeah, uh, definitely. I do the, have the next one for me. Oh, I, I was gonna I was gonna list my my first valid reason. Yes, and, and that is if you're lazy. <laughs> I, if if you are lazy and and that is something you are unable or believe you are unable to change, then don't start a business like that, that like if you, because it's not going to work out. You, you have to, if you're the one in charge, you have to figure out how to make things happen and how to convince yourself that you want to do things. Shannon's trick of when you say you, you, you figure out what story you want to tell. And then that makes it uh, easier to plan the path and walk the path to get there. That's, that's a hack Against laziness, as I see yes, it, it is. right? <laughs> it's totally that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a it's a trick. It's a trick, but it works. But Absolutely. it works because you you have the opportunity to kind of craft this story. Uh, and I mean, I tell my kids this all the time. I'm sure they're so tired of hearing me, but uh, say it. <laughs> but it is it is true, and it, it is works for me because even though uh, you know I've started a bunch of companies and had you know some level of success and uh, continue to have a great life. I, I, sometimes I think of myself like, you know, just getting yourself motivated. I know I'm not lazy. I don't sit down very much, but sometimes it's hard to get going. And that, that story techniques pushes me to, uh, to, you know, to keep rolling because I know, I know what I want to talk about. I want to yep. talk about getting, <laughs> how I got things done, yep. you know, and I, not how ironic, I missed opportunities. Ironically for me, fear is it, it used in the right way uh, as, as a motivator is often a thing that makes it very easy for me to push past being lazy. Uh, mm. If I if I sit and think, okay, well, 
if I don't do the things that we need to do, if I don't go add to, to live with my example, if we don't add more shows, we will have attrition, right? Shows will end. Shows yeah. will choose to leave us. Like, I mean, it's just a natural part of the, 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 you know, being in business. If we don't add new shows, we will, if we're not growing, we're shrinking and it will happen slowly, you know, so slowly that it's like boiling a frog sometimes, you know, and you don't notice it until, I don't want to say it's too late, but it's later than you would like to be addressing it. And so the fear of that drives me to go and be like, no, okay, well, if I don't go talk to this person, I know that, that you know, one of my shows is in the process of making a decision to either end or leave or no longer be represented by us, right? Whatever that, whatever that outcome might be sure. or whatever that path might be. If I'm not having the conversation to add more, we are then therefore we are choosing to shrink. It's like, Oh yeah, I can't do that. Yep. Yeah. Take no, that phone call, that man. Sense. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. No, it's good. And what I might take away from this is, is uh, we all have that, part of us inside i think most of you know, most of us do but yeah. it's coming up with a system to manage it and to uh you know trick yourself or have a hack or just realize you know holding yourself accountable whatever yeah. it is yeah whatever um, it is yeah is is the you know I, I tell that story the two guys go to the gym and as they leave the gym they each hand each other their bags and they say i'll see you tomorrow because you know, they, they hold each other accountable because you're just like, well, I have to go back because so-and-so won't have all his gear, yes. <laughs> you know? That's right. It, it That's works. Right. It works. Yeah. Uh, the, the next one for me was, uh, I hear a lot people say, well, I don't have access to resources. I don't, I don't have any capital to start a company. I need to go buy a bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, you, you need some money, right? Uh, how, how do you get this going? And I think that while there there's definitely some validity to this, depending upon what you want to do, um, it's just another piece of the puzzle. It's a, it's another problem to solve, right? Yeah. And I, I I think we should do a show like how to finance anything, Ooh. and how to get right. I like that um, idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because we've kind of talked about it over the years. I was searching our our uh, archives. Yeah. Seven years worth of business information and it's kind of spread out. And so I, I think we should do a, a show that focuses just on, Hey, here's, here's some traditional ways and here's some alternative ways. Cause we've used both and um, ways to get access to capital, but you can definitely do it. And I'd, I'd love to dig in more, but I think there's more than just a couple minute conversation to it. So, so check back soon. It may even be next week's episode. Yeah, it's on, how, it's how on the list it. and it's, uh, yes, yeah. it's now high on the list. That's right. Yeah. yeah that's a great like one. That, but, uh, yeah. but, but don't let that, that's not a wall that, that. Stops oh no. You. It may if slow, that's, you, slow you down, but you're going to have to figure that out. You're always going to be up against that wall. If you yeah. have, if, if you have an idea, chances are you are not going to be able to fund it, create it the way that you want because you don't have access to all the resources that you would need. That's the entrepreneur's scenario, right? I don't want to call it yeah, a curse or a right. dilemma or even a, it's just how it is. And so you figure it out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Speaking yeah. of ideas, one of the, th one of the things I, I really like the saying, I, I think about it all the time. One that you remind us of often, Dave is, you're, if you want your idea to be worth a hundred bucks, go write it on a hundred dollar bill, something like that. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, right? Yeah, right, right. Um, but the 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 concept, uh, you know, thinking uh, you don't have a great idea, so you can't start a business. Uh, you know, it, it's not the idea that makes the business succeed. It's the day to day grind. It's the, how efficient yeah. you are in, in the implementation. In the, imp the implementation. You know, that's it. Go make yeah, it happen. That's the. Yes, that's the differentiator. There's so many people that come up to guys like Dave and I that have been in business for, you know, 25, 30 years with an idea. And you're like, OK, well, that's great. You know, but let's now what's the next part? How are you going to get this all done? Yeah. And, and most of those people don't come back when you when you push back and say, OK, show me how you're going to achieve yeah. these things. Well, I mean, right? just just if you need this proof to you, look at the restaurant business. New restaurants start all the time. Are these ideas unique? I mean, you could you could really narrow it down and say, oh, well, this one is serving something in this way and this one's serving something in this way. But in general, the idea of opening a restaurant, not unique, not even close. Nope. But some of them succeed wildly. Some of them fail miserably. 
Why? Well, there's a lot of factors, but most of them come down to how was it done? Not what were they trying to do? How was it done? That's where your answers always lie. So, yeah, yeah. you don't need a billion dollar good. idea. You need nope. an idea. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You, well, you need you got to know what yeah. you're going to do. <laughs> But yeah, if you look in your area and you think that the carpet cleaning uh, business or service is is a joke and there's an opportunity to, uh, you know, get a bunch of big commercial accounts, if you did something a little differently, that that's an idea enough. The yep. action of getting things done are far more important than the ideas. I, you I know? agree. I agree. Yeah. 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 Um, one of my favorite ones that is a, a that I call a valid reason is that your immediate family, not your extended family, being very the people you live with that that need to that are going to live this life with you, whether they choose to or not, if they don't support you and you can't get them to support you, I, I call it a valid reason. I mean, you can certainly create a business if your partner or your kids or whatever don't support you. Uh, I'm not saying your business partner, but your life partner, although yeah. the, the two are very closely related. <laughs> they are. Uh, it's a really tough one. If you don't have the support of them or if they're telling you you're going to fail, you know, which is the which is anti support, that's going to make things really difficult for you. Uh, and and I would say I hate to say it, but I would say if if you've got, you know, your your spouse or your partner or your kids, the, the people that are right there every day that are going to be in your ear every day, if they're saying you can't do this, I don't believe that this is doable, all of that, I, I, then, I, yes, I agree. You should not start a business. Yeah. And, and I, I had that same one. And, and I think you're right. It's so challenging. And, you know, one thing you can try to do, and, and I have this right above my uh lack of confidence um, the thing that I want to talk about. And it'd be the same in, in a similar mode. Yeah. Can you start some small things that to build confidence in, oh. uh, in, in that they would think you're, Oh, okay. Maybe he did. Maybe that person, maybe this is there's something to it. Can you do a, a little side hustle or something that you're like, Hey, look, I made a little, you know, my comment always like, Hey, if you can make 500 bucks, you can make 5,000, you can make five, you can make 50 and on and on. Yeah. Um, Cause scalability is a whole nother, uh, you know, part of it, but can you show them, Hey, look, I decided not to sit on the couch and I'm doing research and I'm, I built this or I'm, I'm selling this or I'm learning how this thing works. And I just got whatever I achieve something that not only helps build your own confidence, which is really important, yeah. but it, the confidence of others in you. And so maybe you can lead them down, you know, the path, so to speak of, and, and maybe it's a side hustle and you keep your regular job. So, cause that, a lot of this lack of support is, is fear. People oh. are afraid. What, ha what yeah, they're projecting their and fear onto you. Of yeah. course, of yeah, course. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and it so is, it is invalid, but it's really tough to, get past it when it's the people you are immersed in life with every day. Because I also yeah. have on my list uh, of invalid reasons. If your friends say it can't be done because you, it, those they're easier, not easy, easier yeah. to ignore than the people with whom you live. And so it's the same thing, but you know, at arm's length. And if your friends say it can't be done, okay, well fine. Then maybe just find a way to use that as fuel to, to prove them wrong. Yeah. 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 But, it, you know, living yes. your life to prove your spouse wrong, that's no, a different that's modality, I think. <laughs> it is. It is. And and so you who know your your significant other the best. Yeah. Uh, it is. Um, and, you know, ent being an entrepreneur is a lot of starts and stops and or fits and stops, whatever they call it. Yeah, fits and uh, starts. It, yeah. I, yeah, fits and starts. I, I have, you know, started things that didn't go anywhere and had to pivot into something. But, uh and for me, always having a strong foundation, once I started one business that, that was paying the bills and was solid and I was getting paid and oh, all that's that kind a, of stuff. That's then, a huge thing right there. Yeah. It, it is. It, yeah. Because the, then people say, okay, you, you 
do have this skill set. So then when I said, okay, I want to go start another company, it wasn't like, what? You know, was, oh, all right, well, let's, let's, uh, let's see how, how it goes. How can that work? Yeah. Let's how can how that work? So, right. Yeah. So, so think about how you can build confidence, their confidence in you with small little things that are not going to put them at risk and, and, uh, make them fearful of, of this, this change that you want to uh, embrace. Embrace. Yeah. And, and forcing them to embrace. It's, it's one thing for your friends to be just sort of watching as passive observers, but if it's your family, uh, you know, yeah. they, they, they are going to have to suffer the results of this positive or yes. negative. So the pain, yeah, the pleasure and the pain, that's for uh -huh. sure. I mean, your friends are idiots. So, so don't worry about them. That's uh, fine. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, you can always, uh, there is, you know. there is a mindset, you know, I, I still follow that, that guy, the hardcore closer, Ryan Stuman oh, uh, yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. And, and he is all about making sure you surround yourself with people that not only believe in you, but believe in the life uh, of an entrepreneur, of people that can just go out and get it done. And, and you know, he has, I mean, he has continued to just level up and level up and level up since, yeah. since we met him. And, and I, I mean, I, you know, he's proven that there is a lot of truth in that. If you're hanging around with people and you know, he talks about the force of average and uh, whatever your average is of the people around you, that is where you will gravitate. And it's very difficult to, consistently be above uh, or below the average of the people around you. So his idea is, well, like, cut, cut the people that can't believe in this or can't even com comprehend this out of your life and only have people around you that, that, that truly support this easier said than done way easier. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, it, but there's, he's not wrong. There's there. some truth here. No. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not wrong. Yeah. 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 Uh, do we have a little time to talk about time here? Hi, um, I, I, I don't know, Shannon. I, I don't have any time to do this, man. It's crazy. <laughs> that's right. I hear this a lot too. I don't have time. Where do you find the time? How, how can you, you know, this kind of thing. Um, it, you know, if you don't think you have enough time to start a business, I, I would suggest you really, the first thing you should do is start keeping track of your time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I love this to did list concept where, you know, the, during the day, instead of, writing a list in the beginning actually it's throughout the day and towards the end of the day or night yep. uh, that you write down what you did and what you accomplished and how much time you spent on uh, doing these things and and i think you'll be pleasantly surprised that uh, there is time to carve out of your day um, we're all in different situations it of course you know if you've got little kids or other extenuating stuff going on in your life of course it, it takes more time but um you know, I, I can tell you my own story was, you know, I've, I've told this before on the show when I figured out my kids, we wanted them to go to private school. Well, I didn't I didn't have enough money for it, you know, and so sure. like, how do we do this? And I used that. I think that's uh, when we met. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Because yeah. I reached out to you and said, hey, I need to start a business because I got to pay for private school for these kids. And I used that rich dad, poor dad concept was, you know, Robert. Kiyosaka, whatever, where yeah. he wanted a Porsche. He didn't just go borrow the money to buy the Porsche. He's like, well, how do I figure out how to generate the revenue that will get me the Porsche? And so, you know, we, my wife and I, we worked 10 to midnight. You know, Dave, you did all the back end, the tech stuff and the promote and the, the, uh, sold the ads and everything on yep. the site. And we did the, the content after the kids went to bed and we sat down across from each other at a table. And, and I remember Renee did the coupons. I posted deals. Um, you can find the time. Uh, there, there, there's a phrase I love is, you know, whatever you want, you just have to figure out what it costs and you have to pay for it. But but you have to decide to do it. You can't just want, oh, I want to do that. No, you have to make that decision and, and you can carve out the time. You may be a little more tired. You may have to lose a little sleep, get up earlier, go to bed later. For me, it was working late was my thing because I'm not a morning person. Um, and it worked out, you know, when I wanted to learn how to create websites, I took a course in the middle of the night and I just, you, you just plow, plow through it. Yep. Gotta have a way to do it. Well, I, I love your sort of knee jerk answer to people who say, I don't have the time. I, I've, I've seen you do this. You ask them, well, do you ever watch TV? And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and immediately it's like, oh 
Yeah, actually, I, I do have the time. You know, you, you, I think you put it in our prep notes as the 10 to midnight story. I'd call it the eight to midnight yeah. story. You know, <laughs> once dinner's over, you got four extra hours in your day, man. Like or Massive three, time. even if it's just two, like, okay, that's 10 hours a week. Yep. 10 hours a week. Yeah. It's yeah. massive. And and it it's a great way to, you know, continue your education, uh, learn new things, try new things and and experiment um, on your own. And then when you're you, you know, you're not going to you may not find success right away. You probably won't, but as you, you know, okay, this I'll try this. Let me oh, that didn't work, but look what I learned. I can do this. I'm going to go this route now and try this new thing. Um you're going to just build that confidence. And then when you start dripping out uh, the the dripping of success to everybody else, they start looking at you in a different way Yeah, because you're not just the guy or the girl that talks about all these great ideas and you're going to do this, you're going to do that. You're talking about what you've done and what you're in the process of doing. Yep, um, And that's powerful, man. It, it's a system that starts to have impact and it, and it energizes you um, to just go to the ne next level and level up and go this and do that. And, and, you know, I'm searching for those things every single day. We were just talking about, you know, the, our, our podcast here and finding ways to change it and do, do new things. I'm always on the lookout for that. And uh, you guys can do that too. Yeah. Got to carve out that time. Yeah. Well, speaking of time, do we have anything else to share? Is it, is it time to give our listeners time to do the yeah. next thing in their lives. Yeah, I think I, I, that's really what I have to do. I, you know, read a lot. I, I really love, um, you know, finding new books, whether it's the E-Myth, the Power of Positive Thinking. Mm. I love Scott Adams' book, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big, because it's a very contrarian way to look at things that when I read, I was like, whoa, this is totally different. Um, and, you know, we've been telling you these things for the last seven years. Are you going to let the next seven years go by without taking some kind of action? And I would challenge you to do that and come visit us uh, in the small business support group, businessshow.co slash Facebook. Tell us your story. Tell us what's in your way and we'll help you figure it out. And uh, we appreciate you listening. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, you know, feedback at businessshow.co. That's where we want to hear from you. Make sure to check out rate tracker at sky-sale.com slash rate tracker and go give a listen to our Mac Geek Gab podcast too we'd love to see you over there see you next time keep living that charmed life <laughs> <laughs>